Good morning, Kern Elementary. Happy Thursday. All right, you'll notice I'm in a different location today. I'm at my parents' house. So um, no picture on the wall today. I'm setting. But I'm here to tell you the news um, that's been going on over the past week and update you guys on anything. And I'm also going to, at the end of the video, walk through what you guys have in your packets for um, homework today. Okay, so that triangle note taking, you're going to, we're going to work through that today um, together. I'm going to walk you through it and tell you, you know, how to do it. And then you guys can um, do it yourselves. All right, so make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video um, so that you get help understanding how to do the homework. Okay, so we're going to start off with the news. So it is, we are halfway through April. Can you believe it? All right, we are rocking and rolling with April. It is 416. All right, so I have some good stuff. Now, robots are helping Japanese students attend to graduation and walk the stage. Okay, so unfortunately, since we are under social distancing guidelines all over the world right now, all of the countries, all right, these Japanese students weren't gonna be able to actually physically attend their graduation. But their professors and their um, the president of the college, that's the person in charge of the college, okay, it's the dean or the president, um, decided that, hey, we're a technology college, we know how to solve this problem. So they got robots and they put iPads of the students on the robots and they walked around and watched the speech and they got to get their diplomas um, on their little robot arms and they got to have a full graduation safely staying at home. All right, I think that's pretty awesome. Now, um, another thing, Donald Trump has pulled all US funding from the World Health Organization, which is the global organization that um, right now is currently handling the coronavirus outbreak. Um, he has decided to pull US funding from the World Health Organization because he does not um, approve of how they have been handling the coronavirus in his mind he thinks that they're not doing a good enough job um the world health organization is a global health organization um that works with all of the countries it was created um as a so we have you know national health organizations like the cdc you've been hearing a lot about the cdc like what are they who do they, what do they do um, so they're, you know, the Center for Disease Control and they work, you know, with the U.S. The World Health Organization works with the whole world and they, um, do a lot of important work. Okay. So, um, but we are pulling all U.S. funding from them starting, um, as of a couple of days ago. All right. Um, some good things to keep busy. There are a lot of great podcasts out there. I don't know if you guys listen to podcasts, but I love listening to podcasts, especially while I'm doing other things, like if I'm um, coloring or working on a puzzle or um, just like doing the dishes or laundry or something. I like listening to podcasts um, because they keep me entertained. They teach me something. They're free on, you know, Spotify or iTunes podcasts. Um, so that's always a bonus. Love that. So one of my favorite ones that um, you guys can listen to is called But Why, a podcast for curious kids. Okay, so I've actually listened to a couple of their episodes and they've got some really good stuff. And it reminded me of some of the questions you guys used to ask me whenever we had question days. Um, questions like, how do bicycles stay up? Why do leaves change colors? Who was the first person? Which I know for sure one of you guys has asked me. So, hey, there's a whole podcast that'll tell you the answer to that. And why do we eat some animals and not other animals? Okay, they have all sorts of great, great episodes. Um, they've got dozens of episodes. You can listen to them, like, nonstop, and you probably wouldn't run out for, like, a good while. So, not worried about that. There's a lot of great stuff. Um, so check them out. It is called But Why? A Podcast for Curious Kids. And I will link to a couple of places you can find it. Um, I checked and you can probably, you can find it in, um, on Spotify through podcast. If you have Spotify, you can also find it, um, on I like the Apple podcast app. If you have an iPhone, you can find it, um, 
I think you might be able to play it online. It's by Virginia Public Radio, so it is a public show. You might be able to play it online. I'm going to link to some places, though, um, that you can play it if you want to check it out and listen. I really suggest it. It's awesome. I'm loving it, and it's answering a whole bunch of crazy questions for me, okay? So, another one, another space one, because you know Miss Davis loves space, and she can't help but put at least one space news in every news break bulletin. Exoplanet researchers, which are actually scientists that study, um, that are currently undertaking the search for planets that are like Earth, but in other um, galaxies, okay? So, our solar system has our eight planets, and then, you know, Pluto and the rest of the small planets, um, not planets. Okay, so there are other solar systems in, uh, in other galaxies that have other planets that we think could be like Earth. So, um, could, you know, like have water and oxygen and maybe support life that's like us. So, we're searching for all sorts of exoplanets. And in that search, we run through a whole bunch of really crazy cool planets, okay? There's a whole um, poster series by NASA about all of the awesome cool planets that we found in our search for Earth-like planets, and we just discovered another awesome one. So I'm going to tell you about it. This planet is locked with its star, so one side of the planet always faces the star, and one side of the planet always faces away. So the star stays still and the planet moves like this. So the inside always faces. So this side's really, really, really hot, like 4,000 degrees. This side's also really hot, like 2,000 degrees, but not near as hot as 4,000 degrees, okay? And on this side, it's actually hot enough to evaporate iron so it melts the iron and it's hot enough that it evaporates it and it goes up in the atmosphere all right remember we learned about the water cycle in miss best class so things evaporate they go up in the atmosphere and then the wind blows them to the cool side and when the water droplets get cool on earth what happens they condense and they precipitate like rain well, on this planet, it's iron. So that actually means that little raindrops of pure iron, so just like little bullets, are raining on this planet. Oh, it's super cool, super cool. I'm loving it. And then those, you know, that iron gets moved to the hot side of the planet again, and the cycle continues. Instead of the water cycle, it's the iron cycle. It's cool stuff. All right, and that planet is called WASP-76b, okay? Super great. NASA's awesome at naming things. They give things names that are just numbers and letters pushed together. But WASP-76b, that's the name of the planet. If you want to look it up, it's pretty cool. All right. We are also, Governor Abbott is having a press conference today. Okay, so you know I've been keeping you up to date on all of his press conference stuff. So Governor Abbott is having a press conference today during which he will be talking about his plan um, for businesses and schools moving forward from this point. Okay, so I'm going to watch it and I'm going to tell you guys what he said. Um, I'm if Depending on if it's big or not, like I might make another small video just about the press conference and post it, or I might just message all of you guys in Dojo. Okay, it depends on how much stuff he has to say. Now, one more thing. We are now going to talk about how to use your triangle notes okay so i gave you guys a triangle that has all sorts of stuff on it okay so the first couple things you see are i want you to write down the name all right of you first of all always put your name on your papers no excuse even if you're the only one in your house doing your homework you still gotta put your name on your papers okay so you're gonna put your name and the date and then you're going to go to, I'm going to include those same four or five links. I might include one more that I found that I'm really liking um, that I want you guys to check out because it has like a lot of um, social studies and science news and I'm really digging it. So I might send you guys to um, one or two other places and you're going to pick an article. Okay. And you're going to break that article down into your triangle notes. And this is going to help 
teach us how to write journal articles because if you look and you see the news articles it'll have the information at the top of the pyramid first and then it'll get to the middle bit and then it'll get to the end and you see on the side of your pyramid where it says most important to least important that's actually how you write news articles okay so i talked about this a um last week i think in that you write the most important information right off the bat in either your lead or your introduction so that if somebody just picks up a newspaper scans the first sentence they have all the information they need okay and then you bury you know you put all of the like big details and nitty-gritty and the explanations for stuff in the middle if somebody really does want to read and then your conclusion is just tying everything together Okay, so you're going to write in an inverted pyramid, right? Most important up at the top, secondary, least important. Okay, so you're actually going to pick a news article and you're going to fill out this pyramid for me, okay? So we are going to, you're going to pick it from those five or six sources that I post. Um, those are all going to be good things. I want, a lot of you guys have been doing the Time for Kids ones. Those are great. Um, I want you, if you do that, I want you to pick something that is um, in more informational. Okay, so if you go to like Time for Kids or Scholastic, don't pick a story that's like kids' perspective on something. Um, try to pick something. Like I know on Time, there's some good articles about, you know, um, taking Penguin Census or environmental change and stuff like that. Um, these new websites that I'm going to post, they have a lot of good information in them. So you might want to check some of those out um, because personal stories are okay, news stories, but this like pyramid is more about facts. So I want you to pick something that has more facts in it. Okay. So try to pick something that looks like it's in more informational. Okay. Um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of doing no, I'm going to keep those other ones in there. Okay, so just try to pick something informational. So try not to just pick the first one that's like my perspective on um, staying at home, a kid a reporter from whatever. Try to steer away from those to more like educational things, okay? Um, you're going to write the name of the t article. You're going to write who wrote the article, so the author of the article, and you're going to write what website you got it on. So what link did you follow? Did you go to Time for Kids? Did you go to Scholastic Kids Press? Did you go to the information zone? Did you go to um, this new one that I'm going to add, which is Dodo, um, which is really cool. So um, did you go to any of those? And if you did, um, you have to tell me on the line because that's how I know how to find your articles so I can check your work. All right. And you'll see the top of the pyramid says who, what, when, where, and why. Okay, so you're just going to take the information you get from the article, you're going to read the article, and when you're talking about what's the story about, write it in the what. Who is the story about? Like, who's doing the thing? So if the story is about penguin census, then you can write, you know, taking a penguin census and what, and then you have to write, like, which researchers are doing that and who, you know, where, Antarctica, you know, things like that. So go on along that thing. Please actually don't, you know, don't just copy what I did. Pick something else. All right. And you're going to fill out all of those. And then in the next section, you see there's facts. Okay. So I've written some lines, one, two, three, four, five, and you're going to write down the facts that you hear from the article. Okay. So as you're reading, that's why I wanted you to pick an informational article. So as you're reading, you're going to come across, um, either, you know, information or facts that are important in the story. And you're going to write those on that line, those lines. Okay. Um, you're going to have to write kind of small because they're small lines. I'm sorry about that, but it's a triangle and there's only so much space in a triangle. Okay. And then on the bottom is where you get quotes. Okay. So if there's any quotes in the, um, article that, um, you need, so remember, we usually have, you know, one or two quotes at least, you know, the introduction quote and then the closing quote. So you're going to write down if there's any quotes or if there's any additional information that wasn't important enough to be in the fact section, but you still think it's kind of cool. All right. And then you'll see after you filled that out, that that's kind of the way the article was written, right? It was kind of written in who, what, when, where first. And then it was written with the facts in the middle, and then it was written with quotes and interesting additional information at the end. 
okay? And this is to get you guys to start practicing because I'm going to actually send you guys to do, like, you know, to watch videos or something and do reporting on your own. And you're going to take notes just like this because that's going to help you structure how you write your news article. Okay, so that's why we're doing the triangle notes. Now, I'm going to give you the day of the question. Okay, so you're going to do the triangle notes. That's your homework. Then you have to send a picture to me. Um, but also, daily question of the day, and this is about TikTok. Because I've been watching a lot of TikTok lately because I've been bored. All right, and one of my favorite trends on TikTok right now is people doing their makeup while listening to John Mulaney, like while um, quoting John Mulaney stand-up bits. He's a comedian um, and I find him hilarious and I'm loving getting to see people. They're doing their makeup while doing John Mulaney bits and it's like pretty cool. I love it. Um, so your question is, what is your favorite trend on TikTok right now? Okay. If you don't have TikTok, then tell me your favorite trend on, you know, Snapchat or um, YouTube or whatever, okay? Um, so tell me your favorite trend that's going on right now that you just love watching. All right, that is it for me. I'm signing off. Um, you guys are awesome. I am going to watch that press conference and keep you updated. Do not forget to do your homework. Grades are due tomorrow at noon, okay? So I'm trying to get in everybody's work, and I'm not getting a lot of work from a lot of people, okay? There are some people who have not responded to anything, so gonna have some zeros. I don't know what to do. You guys gotta start sending in some work, okay? Um, those of you who are doing it, keep up the great work. Love you guys. You're doing awesome. Don't worry. I'm not talking to you about not doing your work, okay? Um, so, bye. See you guys tomorrow for the last news bulletin of the week. All right, bye-bye.